though. That motherfucker. Me. I did not know he, he didn't did pass. All right, gentlemen, we are live for the Selly Take Podcast episode 13. This is the last normal episode. Next week, we will have the champions in the building. It'll probably be in my living room because there's no room in this room. Uh, champions will be here to talk about their experience. And then the week after, we're going to have all the captains. Uh, and they're going to dive into what we got going on next season. But tonight... We have a special episode once again. No Eric. Uh, he had a work outing or some shit like that. But it doesn't matter. Because to my right, I have Luther Stromboli, Luke Finelli <laughs> in the building. Luke, how you doing tonight? Amazing. Fantastic. Incredible. Wonderful. Love to hear it. To his right, we got rookie Dallas Hawkins. Corbin, how you feeling? Fun, great. I'm excited to be here. Excited to have you on. And to my left, former teammate now, alleges I'm a cheater, Nick <laughs> Aracena in the building. Hello, hello. That's all I got. All right. That's all well, I got to say. Uh, fair enough. Uh, you know, I should have wrote down what we we're going to talk about because I forget and it's on my phone. But we're going to dive into, first and foremost, the matchups from last week. Uh, last week, we started off with the Pride game. We had the Panthers. Versus the Ghost Riders. Um, never again will we do a loser's game. It'll be turned into an all-star game because yeah. that's basically what it was, but with worse talent. Was that bad? It was horrible. It was, it was pretty it was bad. Really? Tommy didn't pass the ball in the second half once. At it was all. pretty bad, yeah. Yeah, it was a horrible game. Dom's, Dom hit the slip and slide. It was embarrassing to watch. Really? Yeah, it was a really bad game. And Panthers pulled out a close one. You guys made it way closer than you should have. We having should have. full nine know. rosters. They started off with four. And then their oh, fifth yeah, came that, in with Kaiser. Yeah. It was bad, dude. In the beginning, it was 5v4. Yeah. We were, I feel like we were just playing around a little bit too much in the beginning, though. But And, and the Ghost Riders had a comfortable lead at the beginning, too, yes. with only four people. Yes, they did. Really? Ziggy hit, yeah. like, three straight. And then they just never touched the ball again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was, that was very hard to watch, yeah. hard to be a part of. Uh, but do we do we need to talk about that one? Do, really. we, do we want to move on? Uh, Luke, you want to talk about it? <laughs> it's just... Just watching what people said from each of the huddles, because I'm just taking pictures. In one huddle, I have the Ghost Riders, and they're up at this point. There's like 30 seconds left on the clock, and they're like, you get the ball, don't pass it. Make them foul you like this is ours. Or, I'm sorry, don't shoot it, right? Make them foul you. First thing they do, drive to the basket. <laughs> First person that touches the ball. They scored on that one, right? But Panthers came back, scored again. Next thing they do, they're still up. Drive to the basket, turnover. Panthers come down, score again. It's like, you guys said don't shoot. So why are you going to the basket? Just keep passing the ball. Kill the 30 seconds. Yeah, no, they definitely could have won that game if they uh, they just held it because we were getting a little too antsy, I'm not going to lie. And then on the Panthers side, you have Dom not taking it serious at all, at all doing his little roll around on the ground, shooting shooting yeah. free throws left-handed, like not giving a damn, like just chucking up volleyball line threes, and then he gets pissed off at his teammates for making mistakes. Like, it's just... I think I missed that game. It was just... It, it was, was terrible to watch. It was interesting. Game. It was terrible to watch, but... Yeah. Glad it's over. I feel like it was... It also could have been a game for... I mean, how we kind of looked at it in a way is like getting our guys who didn't really get to play. We, we started Berg and Gino... Trying what are you trying their, to say? Trying to, trying to get their say? stock up. We're trying to get their draft <laughs> stock up for next season, man. Berg and Steve the Kid yelling at each other in like the first 10 minutes of the game because Berg didn't shoot a shot that Steve passed to him yeah. and went to the free throw line instead. And while he's shooting free throws, they're just screaming at each other. Like the game just started. Relax. Yeah. It was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, but uh, the big news from that game is Steve the Kid's not coming next week and apparently he has an agent. Any news of this, Dallas, as his teammate? An agent. Who, who is Steve the Kid? Well, you're in the ref chat. I don't know if oh. you saw what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Steve the Kid's agent. Uh, any word of this, Dallas? I have no ideas. Panthers. Panthers have not spoke about this. Maybe it's J-Ball. Maybe it's J-Ball. <laughs> and he no, is coming back. Man, Dar is it Darvis? Darvis is dipping into the Panthers now. <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah. Darvis looking yeah, for talent. Dar Darvis saw potential. <laughs> In SDK. Curious. The said in the chat too was hilarious. It was just like, 
Anyways, next question. Next question. <laughs> you fucking nut, man. Uh, shout out Steve the Kid. We love you, but you don't have an agent, and you probably never will. Um, Damn. None of us are going to have an agent. GG. I mean, I have an agent, just not for basketball. Okay, a basketball agent yeah, outside agent, of well, maybe a first that? rounder and his only fans. Oh, okay, okay. No. no. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. That's a, diff- that's a different kind of modeling. That, I, I handle the accounting myself. Yeah, yeah. Ridiculous. That's funny. Um, game two. Game two of the day, we had the Familia versus the Magic Men, the Magicians. Uh, good game. Good game, back and forth affair. Magicians started off really bad. They're three-headed monster. And you'll hear me be pretty brutal in the commentary uh, when that game is out. But Brandon Steed, G, and Mike Mitchell, when they don't pass the ball, that team is just so hard to watch. They play a lot of ISO ball. That's their problem. Way too much ISO. When they move the ball, they got good shots. They have talented pieces. It's when one of them starts to play ISO and the rest of them just kind of follow behind. Uh, Mike Mitchell... Getting into fights with Boogie, uh, we got all that drama going down what right now. Argue? Still, really, yeah, the season's over. They're still upset at each other. Well, uh, Mike Mitchell. Well, Mike Mitchell should have been benched the last second half. He played absolutely <laughs> horrible in that game. He let so many backdoor layups go. He was not hustling. Jacob Nolan was their key player, and I guess he got tired. Um, but he was given heart and hustle. He got subbed out. Didn't come back in for ten minutes after he brought it from a fifteen-point game to a four-point game. Jacob Nolan should have had more minutes. I get he's tired, but you got to get him in earlier. Um, what did you guys see from that game? So from what I saw, like you said in the beginning, it was rough. I think that, to me, in my opinion, my opinion about Familia is they're probably the best rounded team other than the Dogs, just because of like not 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 depth, <laughs> not depth, not depth, but like like this is just this is just my opinion. If you are a captain, right, you need to draft. Well, Mike Parker and um, John John Carter. Carey. Carey. John Carey. You need to they them two together. Like I really like how they played. They played really well together. Um, there was that one point though where, like you said, um, the magician started coming back and Mike Mike Parker was on the bench for too long. I understand he had four fouls. No. He had five fouls. He had, he had five. He had five. five. He had five. He ended up so five. Yeah. It was. I think it was toward the last like four minutes of the game. Three minutes. And that's when he got put in I, as a captain. I need to trust my the best defensive player in the league to come in the game a little bit sooner because it was two back and forth. And if you're familiar, you know you can beat this team, but you need a shutout. Your defensive player needs to come in, play play discipline, and you need to shut this team out. That's just how, what I thought. But other than that, I think that both teams played well. I think um, when Nola came in, that was a spark, and he just never really saw the floor again, and that, that sucks. I like him as a player. He's a hustler. So oh, that's just my opinion. No, no, no Jake, Nolan, Jake Nolan. Nolan. I like I like Jake Nolan, and I I feel like that the season's been weird because he's been you know traded and he's had to fit into different. His finger was all fucked up. Yeah, so I, I feel like um and then like you were saying earlier with the three headed three headed monster. Yeah. You got three black holes on your team. That's just how I saw it. hundred percent. And it's it's tough to win with three black holes if they're not on the same page. So that's just what I think. They both played well. It's just Familia just finished it out, and that's just my opinion on the game. Um, I'll say one thing. Gary can hoop. Yeah. Like I, I've been watching him the past few weeks, and he can get to the basket so easily. He has he has a nice pull up jump shot. Um, but I believe anyone on that team yeah. can hit can hit shots. Oh yeah. Like, just yeah, no, if if Gary has the ball, if Brandon Seed has the ball, if Mike Mitchell has the ball, that's the person that's going to shoot unfortunately and you don't really have to worry about playing the wings because they're not going to kick out if it is it's a bailout pass and it's usually a steal or a turnover and it's just or way out of rhythm it's just way too late for the pass and if they just had some better ball movement because i again i believe everyone on that team could hit a shot if just get them going oh, they had and a good lineup. one thing with jacob nolan is like i played with him outside plenty of times outside of the league but it's like when you don't find your rhythm early in the season, it's hard to get your rhythm with the team if they think you're only capable of doing like certain things. So he does the the stuff that you don't see on the stat sheets. Like he's he's the one cutting, he's the one setting the screens, he's trying to pick up on uh, the defense. So he does a great job. Just unfortunately, in leagues like this, you also gotta score 
if your team needs scores and it's hard to get into a rhythm with a team like the magicians when you have your three guys taking double digit shots and everybody else getting like two or three here and there i see i see the magicians winning that game if they really do move the ball a lot more absolutely because they have shakespeare as well we can't forget about him he was oh, he's, he's a really great key player yeah he and started he, off very well yes and then he kind of flattened out but it's hard when you're not yeah. getting those touches yeah he's always had no shot I don't think they had a shot from the beginning. You don't think so? Nah. nah. La Familia they pulled has it within this, four, three, yeah, two but times. Yeah, totally gonna lose that game. La Familia has this weird habit of just not giving a shit until they're like, "Oh damn, maybe we should." Because that team, and that's, then, that's a talented team. It right? is absolutely. I think the is. only the only thing that they were rewarded for the whole season was with Mike Parker. With Mike Parker, he wasn't getting no like he would foul on defense, and nothing is being called on this guy. Every game, I think, as I was a ref, he should have been in foul trouble. If if we're being if we're being honest here. If refs called reach and fouls how they should be called, I don't think Mike Parker is that high of a defensive player of the year candidate. He definitely doesn't have as many steals as he has. Hundred percent. But he not many. Body first. Yeah. To the third. You can't do that. Or or they'll completely across the body hit full chest and still get the rip. But I don't think a lot of refs either have an angle to see it or really know what consists of a reach and foul. But props to him. He's getting away with it. Keep doing it until you're punished for it. So, like, keep stealing the ball. Why not? He's doing a damn good job at it. Yeah. In this league, we let a lot of things play on. And, I, I, I mean, there's not. it's going to favor the defender more so than it is in oh, the NBA. As I, I like, and I'm still leading the league in fouls, but <laughs> I think that's just a personal agenda. Um Regardless, we'll move on to the demise. The absolute... What the fuck happened? It was brutal. We fell apart. God damn, man. Reapers and Goblins. Game three, final game of round one of the playoffs. Um, You guys had it. You guys had it. It was yours to lose. First half. I'm sitting next to the scorer's table the whole time. First half, Goblins are coming up. They're cheating. Nacho's Sway's brother. Second half, you guys are bitching. That wasn't a good idea, though, to make it rough. I don't think that was a good idea. He's ref. They've refed each other on multiple occasions. No, yeah. It's never been unfair. It's never been biased. Nacho is not in the league. And both of you guys made it clear, we don't want two Panthers refing our game. <laughs> so Who said that? On both I teams, I heard it. Oh. On both teams, I heard it. And they bitched about the refs. So, all right, Nacho's not in the league. He's unbiased. He doesn't care who wins the game. I get that. He could have some bias one way or the other for oh, Sway, yeah, for sure, but in the past he hasn't. So for me it felt like, okay, really it's either promise. him or Dom. And Dom, I went out in the parking lot 10 minutes into the game. He's like, oh, I'll be in in five. I'm like, what are you talking about? The game already started. So your your refing option was not true. Oh, yeah. I'm not complaining about it, though. That's not me. I'm, I'm just telling you what was going on during the game. How many, foul, how many free throws did Sway shoot that game? Had to have been less than less than four. Oh, stats. Had to be less than four. Shout out Dean for not doing the stats. And he, everything was just on the floor, on the floor, on the floor. Even when they were going up, like literally, he's going up, foul on the floor. Like, bro, come on. Same At the start, four. but again, like that's that's also on Ziggy. Like it's not it's not oh just Nacho because Ziggy was that on that. My ref ever again, Ziggy. I'm sorry, I love you, but boy, oh boy. Uh, I love Ziggy. He he is close. a little he is a little passive when calling something, and then. Even if he sees something the right way and a, another ref calls it, he won't overturn it. He'll just, I don't agree, but my hands are clean type of thing. Um, which a lot of the refs have the same issue. And when I refed last season for the one day that I did it, it's the same thing. It's like everything happens quickly. And so you're trying to make the right call on the right person. 100%. And then you have people screaming in your ear, whether it's the fans who are absolutely terrible to listen to and then you have other players like it's just it's a lot to focus on and as you know you oh, yeah. you ref and that's why i had calmed down like the last maybe three games i stopped yelling at the refs because i you know i i get it i do get it but that game was i think you know with Josue going at nacho you should throw the tech early in the game not when there's like a minute left on the game you know you're taking this heat from him the whole time and then you want to throw him a tee with a minute 10 seconds left on the game when we're down by three that you can't you can't do something like that because you're, you're setting the tempo of the game of you know how he could come at you and all that stuff, and then you decide you want to address it the last minute. That, that, that changed everything for us at, at that point. That's fair. That and That's completely fair. That um, was really, really rough. Two, was, we had like, sorry, like five technicals 
two on that game. It was with you know with the dude coming over to the bench. I, you were there. No, I, I, you were there. I, just yeah, yeah, I was sure. mad at it. You were there 100%, the situation. 100%. I handled that as nicely as I could. Who did, was that guy anyways? I what guess it was Alfonso's brother. brother. Was his boys. Oh, okay. I thought it was his brother, not actually his brother. No, no, no. Uh, Joel wants me to say, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, back to you, Nick. There we go. But, <laughs> but yeah, that was it was really bad. And then Sauce going over to him, and then there was another tech there. It was just you guys like, started collapsing with about ten minutes left. Yeah, it was Joel started walking back and forth. He was taken out of it. Alfonso was mentally out of it because Juan was getting under his skin. It was a mental game for you guys. And I, as soon as the trade was made, it made. That's the first thing I thought, was this could be really good or this could be really bad because you and Sway already get in those moods of quitting and like just getting so enamored by the fact that the refs made the wrong call. And then you have Phil, who's the same exact way. And if all three of you are on that, and two out of the three of you were, you did a good job. You tried to keep them calm. You had me dying because you foaming like you foaming like a pit bull at the mouth. Yeah, he was never he was, seen sway like that. Sway was pissed. Yeah, he like, was bro, literally down, foaming bro. out of his mouth. Stop, sit down, bro. Calm down. And you tried your best, but when your two best players are just mentally out of it, it's going to be hard for you guys to close that out. And then Juan took advantage, hit three threes in a row. I knew what he was doing once he did it. Once he blocked Juan, said. He gave that little push, and that's all she wrote right there. Yep. The start of yep. that. And yeah. that was like 10, 11 minutes left in the second half. I wasn't a fan of that. Like, it was it was unnecessary. No, um, bro, but you can't be mad at it. He took the tech, he got the T, and that changed the whole course of the game. It's part of it, man. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not even mad at it. I'm just like, he did what he had to do at the end of the day. He got the goblins to the second run, and I applaud him for that. That was, that was a good move. It was a mental game. 100%. That's, that's what he had to do because you guys have more talent than them. 100%. We should have blew him out. Yep. We, the time we played him right before that, we blew him out by like, what, 22, 20. 23 yeah. points? Almost dropped 100. Yeah, we, sh we should have blew these guys out of the water and they just backfired on us. We even, got too comfortable going into that game. Even some of the Goblins players after the game said we should not have won the game. 100% they, the, they should have. The, the, way, the way that they, that they were playing, the way people were checked out, the way people were just kind of walking up and down the court, for them as well multiple of them said we should not have won this game like a lot of guys gave up a, a lot, lot of guys, guys gave up. up and that's props to Juan and Dean for being two of the guys that didn't give up that's that's props to Juan for being the first round pick that he needs to be to sh because when your first rounder your best player on your team still gives it his all even though you're down by double digits it still kind of picks up the rest of your guys but if your best player, like for you guys, checks out, it's hard for everybody else to stay involved and engaged, thinking that they can still win the game if your best player is like, no, nah, we lost, it doesn't matter. So props to the Goblins, props 100%. to Juan. I'll give it to you guys. Props to Dean. I are gonna get blown out now. I the really didn't. gonna blow these guys out the water, that's for sure. I really didn't think you guys were gonna lose another game. Like, I, I didn't. I thought we were gonna see you guys in the finals, if we're being honest. I, so did a lot of other people. Not me, but other people <laughs> saw that. If we played you guys again, we would win. A hundred percent. I was not going to be able to take another loss for you guys. Yes, you could. You've taken uh, plenty of losses since you left my team, and you got one win. I've taken two, three losses. No. At least three. Two. Three, At three, least three. three, three yeah. At least three, three. Three, three, three. Yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. Sorry, Nick. Any Anything? I think that <clears throat> another reason you guys started losing the game was when I was watching it, I, I have learned to love Phil's game so much because he is one of those top players who can pass the ball, and there's not a lot of them in this league that do that. And he's really good at it. But there's a point where he needs to stop doing it in important games like that and actually try to score it. So he, he the beginning he was getting his open shots, I think like he opened up with like two or three threes. Mm -hmm. He started passing the ball, letting Sway do his thing, Sway do, started doing his thing, and then at the end, I felt like it was a, a little too late for him to try to start scoring. I feel like during the whole game, you've you've got to you've got to give it to your two your two scores, like especially so like no disrespect, but your team is very defensive. Like you guys are super defensive, and you got little to none offense without those two. So you need to run the offense through those two, and it's not your guys's. I feel like with Phil, he just was passing it too much. Well, offense, he's just like scoring. I feel like he didn't get enough shots. Exactly. He I did think not get enough shots at all. That's I what I was saying when I was watching the game. I was like, he, he needs to start shooting the ball more. He needs to start. He needs to start getting more touches because Sway is doing his thing, trying to get the fouls. And like you said, he wasn't going to the line as much. He was taking a lot of jumpers, believe it or not, Sway. I felt like he took like yeah. three or four threes. He did. That's not. That's, that's not his game. Yeah, no. Well, the first time you got, or the the previous time you guys played them, Phil at forty four, Sway at close to thirty. That's what you guys needed. 
100%. You guys need to both of them to be more aggressive. And then another thing from from my personal experience go- playing against the goblins, you can't you cannot go and help off of one. You cannot do that. You you're going to lose if you do that. You can, on any of them. They can on any of them exactly. Three. So you have to let them beat you one on one. And you he you got I think it was Phil who was guarding Juan yeah. for a little bit and I mean he was he his IQ is correct. You got to help if it's an open lane but with the goblins, they do so well as they drive in, kick it out. That's one of the best teams that do it, is they drive in, kick out, look for the open man, get open threes, especially with one in the beginning of the season. That's how they won a lot of the games. Bunch of open threes with Dre coming down, doing his thing. Juan, so, Dean, Dre. Like, yeah, you I, can't leave any of them open at the three. I definitely think, though, I agree. Um, the mental thing was just, it was tough. That it's was, disgusting, bro. yeah, it was, it was tough. We're grown men, bro. We got to yeah. keep our composure out there. That shit is. Tough to watch. Yeah, no, it really was, especially being on the phone when that happened. I, I told Phil, before the season even started, when he was going into the Magicians, I told him, because we play so much at Winter Park together, you can't play there how you play here, because mm-hmm. he's always passing it, and like, shoot it, like, passing it, shoot it. And I was like, you have to, you're going to have to be aggressive. You're going to have to be the leader. You're going to have to be the person that scores the most. And he does like to pass. But he got he got set up on such a great team. I feel like for scoring, like you got you got a lot of guys who are willing to play defense and willing to give you the ball and let you do your thing. I remember the first game he played against us. They were telling him to shoot and like go go do your thing. So I feel like that's you needed that this and then this especially in a playoff game that's so important. You need your scorers to go out there and have that mindset like I'm gonna go out there and score. But I mean that's just it didn't look like that. he looked like he was passing ball, which is fine. Like I said, that's what I love about his game. But in these important games you gotta go out there and score like you did the first time you played against him. Hundred percent. And I love Sway to Death, one of my favorite people in our league, but he's not a great facilitator. Like he can drive to the basket and get he can get there however he wants. Mm-hmm. He's fantastic at it. But a lot of his passes he doesn't give to his guys in rhythm. Or it's like too low or it's like a bailout pass and that caused a lot of turnovers as well. It caused a lot of bad shots, bad opportunities for him, um, which hurts, especially because he was your primary ball handler. Yeah. Like, that's why you got to be a point guard. I think it's just, you know, you guys had, you guys also, another thing is like, every team's going to have a bad game. You guys, I mean, you guys had a great game in the beginning, and then it just fell off. You guys had a great games, like, from the beginning he played with you guys to the end. I think that just this might have been one of those games where it's just a bad game, and unfortunately it was a playoff game. Uh, that's another thing that you gotta look into is like teams as a whole will have a bad game. So that's just that's what I think about that. I'm not gonna say anything more onto it. So it is what it is. It's the next season, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Before we talk about next season, Luke, I just want you to address for the fans Luther Stromboli. This beef with Darvis. Let the people know what's going on. I, I'm hearing a Fourth of July one v one. Apparently, um, I'm in I'm in a separate basketball like group chat with Mike, uh, Boogie, Mike Mitchell, Phil, a few other people sprinkled in here and there. And there's this guy who you may have seen him come to the games. He stands, oh, you've seen him. He stands in the doorway and he just films. He films Mike Mitchell and <laughs> Phil. Um, he's a grown man that dick rides very hard um whoa, for whoa. some reason he really likes mike mitchell and well, i talked to mike he's mitchell. got the best catchphrase in the league hell yeah, hell yeah. I, I talked to mike mitchell and mike mitchell's wife they have no idea why this this man likes mike mitchell so he's much he's a hood superstar what are you talking <laughs> they about they have no idea why i like i thought that they were dating but mike mitchell whoa. crushed those rumors <laughs> um so and he just we went at it one time because he started questioning like our, like the league and he started like making attacks at me and says that when he gets back in shape and if any of you've seen him it's going to take a while um, <laughs> that he wants to play me one one on one and so apparently July 4th he wants me to play him one on one at Barnett Park he Is said that's plenty of time for him to get in shape and I was like okay I got money on Darvis me too <laughs> <laughs> me too I like Darvis I think Darvis is a pain in the ass he tries me all the time he's always questioning what I do but I think overall he's, he's a, a guy, nice man. guy he, yeah, he, is. He's he's a nice guy. he yeah. shows up to just random courts and just films people and sends it in the chat. He's a coach, man. And 
<laughs> he enjoys and it. then he he just shit talks and critiques people like Phil, well, that's the part that's hilarious though uh, Phil because it's just unsolicited advice that nobody asked for and it's great uh, Phil lost in uh, in his Winter Park League or something like that or his Goldenrod League whatever it was and Darvis goes he lost in Winter Park lost in Selly Nation Phil when are you gonna sit back and really consider like is my is my rec ball career over? Should I just stick to outdoor ball? It's like, bro, it's not that serious. Like, what do you mean is my rec ball career over? <laughs> you gotta like it. What the hell? Like, what is That's going on up comedy. there? That's good comedy. It's not that serious, my guy. No, it's that serious. We need Darvis in the chat. Darvis, get the fuck in here. God damn it. You have him on speed dial. Why don't you give him a call? FaceTime him. Were you guys number? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. All right, Luther Stromboli. What was the next thing? Oh, I got it. Yeah, the, the season six. I think Gene. Uh, he said it, and it's a good idea. I could be wrong. If it wasn't Gene, it was somebody. Uh, said. Oh, I think it was uh, JPP. He said we should do the season six draft board predictions, but I just want to condense it. First round. What do we think? First round talent, eight teams. Um, out of the first round, guys, I mean, I don't know if he watches the podcast or he's not. Trayvon is not invited back because he didn't help out. Um, really? And then Notch, he helped out one time. And every time he had to leave because he had got to die. From the, from the Ghost Riders. Okay. Yeah, and he so, missed like four games or something. Yeah, he like only that. missed two, actually, when you look at the stats. It really? seemed like he missed more. It but seemed- he just left right after without helping out. As we've made clear, you have to help. It's really? not that hard. Um, but anyway, Uber. we have Nacho coming back and Dame, two first rounders as well. Okay. So for me, the first round board, I have nine guys that I would have, and I would, obviously eight of those would go in the first round. So for me, it would be Braylon, Nacho, Sway, one v one God, no, Yusuf, Dom, Juan, Phil, and Dame. Those are the nine that I would think. No offense, I, I'd take one of you one out of that. That's fine. I that's you, that. that's your, out of those, or if you have anybody else that I'm forgetting. Probably had Chef. I like Chef at number one. Do, if, if what Chef? Your, chef, like, that's your teammate? Kenny the Chef, yeah. He, he could be. He's too, he's too short. He just, it just depends on what, like, what, what you're looking for in a team. If you're looking for a facilitator who can score. He can lead. He, he's a dog. Exactly. That guy's a dog. So, yeah, he is. <laughs> um, you guys you know, wait, did you have Phil in that? Yes. Yeah, okay, 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 yeah. I just think, I mean, Joel, I think he's 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 a dog. Too, so you would put him at number nine or somewhere in the I, second I, round? Yeah, because he was shadowed by Yusuf the whole season. So it's just like you have a player like Yusuf and then you have Joel, you know, Batman and Robin. You just, it, it didn't really work out. How I think he took the to back seat intentionally, and the game that Yusuf wasn't there, he shined. Yeah. So I think that he still has that in him. He's just letting the other guys do their thing because he doesn't really need to – be ball dominant with this team. But you can't be a first round pick though while taking a back seat like that. That's just well, that's just my opinion. That's how I see it. Of course it you can. You if if uh, you if you're the first round pick, it is your job to fill in what you need to fill in to get your team to win. He's been doing that. There's games where he has double digit assists. Like he's doing the job that we need him to do. Yes, yeah, three point percentage fucking sucks. But he's you just know, taking he's, way more this season for no reason. He's he's, he's so working on it. Well. He has this habit of showing up five minutes before the game starts and then getting his warm-up shots during the game. That's the story of my life as well. <laughs> like, he, he likes to get his three-point shots up early to get his, <laughs> to get his rhythm going. But I, I like him with the ball. If, if he feels comfortable shooting a shot, I'm going to let him shoot the shot. Like, I'm not going to be... There's only one time that I was mad at him. He had um, Gabby, yeah. the, the yeah. short guy on yeah. Tone's Gene team. Lopez. He had him at the top of the key. He takes a step back three pointer. I think I roughed that game. You sat him down, right? Yeah, there, yeah, right? I yeah, sat yeah. him. He took a step back three pointer instead of just going at the shortest guy in the league. And then not only did he not make it, he went to pick up Mike Parker, who had the ball. So Gabby just walked right behind him, and he was by himself underneath the rim. And if it wasn't for Yusuf busting his ass to get back to stop the play, that would have been an easy fast break bucket. And so I benched him, and I, I gave him some shit about it. And he's like, I can't take those? I was like, no, not in that matchup. Just trying to the basket. But any other time, I'll never be mad at him for shooting. 
Um, the same thing with same thing with Yusuf. Like these past three or four weeks, Yusuf has played phenomenal basketball. He's played like the uh, first Yusuf. round. For, he's played like the first round pick that he says that he is, and everybody should believe it now. He's playing a fantastic, fantastic game, and he's a huge reason why we're winning games. So shout out Yusuf for <laughs> letting us make him better. And the whole thing was, you know, people always said like, how are you gonna control Yusuf? Like, what are you gonna do to control Yusuf? Yusuf's a grown ass man. You're not gonna do anything to control anybody. What, the o- the only thing I did, it's not, even, it's not even contained. I just helped him focus his energy from his teammates to the other team. And since we had that talk, he's played so much better and I'm extremely proud of this man. He's doing a phenomenal job. He's quitting with all the smoking and drinking. Proud of him for that too. And it's because of him, because of Joel, because of everybody else on my team doing what they need to do to win. And that's all I can ask from anybody. And I wouldn't trade anybody, wouldn't change it. I don't think he's bad. I don't think Joel is bad at all. I just think yeah, you're saying there's something yeah, else to the first rounder and a second rounder. 100. percent It's like I said, you're not a second rounder. I don't think I'm a second rounder. Either. Yeah, I, and then it was season not three, season three. I played like a second. It was I, not disrespectful because you had Yusuf, yeah, me, no, AJ Ingersoll. It's a different team. You played a phenomenal role. Shot 60 100%. plus percent. Like it's a different role. And different I was guys. Basketball almost every day. Though. Yeah, it's different. They're saying Santi is potential first rounder as well. I think Santi could be, but he's just not reliable enough. He shows up late. That's, that's the that's issue. His only issue. That's the issue as well. <laughs> I was gonna like, oh. say Santi as well. Yeah. I, like, I, like, I played like, oh. with I played with Santi before outside this league, and I just I think when he really wants to, I mean, he's on a team full of like I said, that team is out of those four, they're very they're very good, and they don't really need a a person, mm-hmm. but he'll be that person. And if he can't be that person, I Braylon, I think that Braylon should go number one. It's, I agree with you. I think next year he will go what number one if like. Uh, it's Braylon, stupid. Over who would you put over Braylon? Maybe Nacho. Yeah. I, I just I like Braylon's size because Braylon can yeah. shoot and he's got size. And Sway's season this year, he could. I mean, there's a possibility he could be top two, maybe. Just, that's why we want to have this discussion. It depends who's the captain and who, how you want to build your team <laughs> for the next. Year. That's that's all it really is. That's my it's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but yeah, no, I I think that. I, I I love the way Santi plays. He's definitely like the Curry of this league. Oh, he's, like, he's, he's so smooth. I, I yeah. hate yeah. His curry how team. little effort he puts into everything that he does. And he, how he's... low his socks are. Yeah. That... Nick. <laughs> he I literally, it. it looks like he's just walking through everything that he does. Everything that he does. He catches the ball, just goes, and it just goes in. And I hate how effortless his game is because it's fucking stupid the rest of us are busting our asses and he just walks up pulls it goes in it doesn't matter he's good man he's really he's fucking good, good. put Berg in there headband Berg number first I mean if he's got the yellow headband maybe he's a different maybe. breed but he's gotta be on a yellow team that's <laughs> that's it um and 1v1 is a first rounder 1v1 okay so then you say that baller. second round who do we take out of the first round then if you guys are captains which you, obviously you're a captain soon to be captain you, uh, season as, seven. As soon as you get the love for basketball, I, I back. have the love, bro. I do. It's just frustrating being fucking ass. I, I <laughs> then you gotta play that. basketball. I suck again. He's like, it's he's like, like, I hate playing basketball now because I suck, and bro, then I, I want to be a captain. I couldn't fucking dribble the ball, bro. Like I had wide open lanes, and I try to do what I normally do with you know my hook, and I would lose the ball every fucking time. That that's just frustrating. Whenever you play ball growing up, you know, outside, I, I wasn't really on teams and shit, but you know, I played ball my whole life, and I would go to East Sport and bust ass. It's eSport and all that, but this is, you know, it's a, it's a rec league. Happens to everyone, bro. Bro, but it, it's, it, it, this never happened, bro. It's just, I haven't played ball. You did the same thing last season. Do you remember, do you it remember? Was, it wasn't that bad, though, compared to this season, dog. Like, this season, like, bro, I, I, I can't keep up with people. It's like. That was me the first six games. Bro, I don't know what happened to me, dog. But it is what it is. So what would you say is in order? I get, we'll just go through the list. I wrote it out here. Braylon. I put Braden, it autocorrected me. Braylon, Nacho, Sway, 1v1, Yusuf, Dom, Juan, Dame, Phil. If you want to put Santi in that discussion. Um, my list, I guess I'll start us. For, for personally, Braylon and Nacho are close with one and two. From there, it's really a toss up of preference. Because you could go Sway, you could go Yusuf, you could go Dom or Juan. Personally, because of Dom and Juan's size, and Sway and Yusuf's ability to play both sides of the ball. Johnny's not coming back? He didn't want to pay. 
So I don't know if he's going to come back. Johnny, you're more than welcome to come back. We love you. But you got to pay. If Johnny comes back, that's a different story. Now, if Johnny if comes back, out. then somebody gets knocked out, and then we have more talent in the second round. Um, I would put 1v1 right after those four. But 1v1, to me, can get tossed in that Dom Juan conversation as well. Um, I personally love playing with 1v1. Uh, and then after that, Dame, Santi, Phil are all kind of clumped in in that... Eight, nine, ten. I don't know who Dame is. So I Dame, he's a dog. Yeah, he's good, man. He's, he's, dog. he's young too. Yeah, he's twenty now. He didn't play this season because he's playing some kind of collegiate ball or something like that. Um, but he was MIP last year. Team was fucking horrible, but he, he averaged over twenty four points a game. Is he tall? He's similar to your yeah. size, okay. maybe like an inch taller than you. Okay. Uh, but athletic, super nice kid. I feel like I feel like I was, I was watching quiet. some of your guys is like. Before I joined the league, I was watching like the season before. Yeah, the Bandits. He was a Bandit. Yeah, I think I know you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, a the solid only good player. person on the Bandits. He's a solid <laughs> player. But he's one of those guys, because he's so young, he kind of falls to the bottom of the mm -hmm. the first round or beginning of the second round, in my opinion, because mm -hmm. he's not a guy that's going to get you a championship. Like, the top guys, Nacho, Sway, Braylon, Dom, Dom, Juan, I trust those guys in pressure moments to use their size or use their ability to get you a bucket when need be. Dame's talented, but because he's so young, at least in the two seasons he played, he didn't prove that he was going to be that guy. So far, I, he could come back and absolutely cook everybody, and I could be completely 100%. wrong. I love Dame's game, and I would definitely draft Dame. Absolutely. I think Dom's issue is I play, I've been That's in season three. He's always injured. There's always something going on with Dom. He he season three while well, he broke he fractured his hand or something. Punched he punched I know it's not purposely, you know, but that's that's the only thing that would honestly take season him out of the two. top three picks. Season he's two, a dog. season two, he messed up his knee. Season three, he punched a wall. Season four, he stayed healthy for the most part, and then this season, hamstring. So yeah, that's I think that's three out of his four downfall. seasons injury plagued. But he he's if he didn't if he was an in, no injuries. That's a top two pick right there. He, Dom, is, Dom is nasty. Yep. Absolutely nasty. Yep. He's one of the hardest players in the league to guard, in my opinion. Yep. With, with Dom, for having him as a teammate, I feel like, and this is not, this is going to be weird coming out of my mouth, but I feel like, in a sense, his injury and the Panthers kind of held him back this season. In the sense of, obviously, his injury is going to hold him back. He didn't get to play. And also, like, the first couple games were like you're a first rounder. We need you to do your thing, and like then people started complaining. And I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I was a little bit like I don't know how to play with him because I know I can go out there and I can score, but I need to know how to play with him to help let the team win. So like that's why like the first couple games I scored like four or five points, and it was frustrating. And I, I once I realized whenever he left after the Mako's game when we started losing and stuff, I was like, okay, we really do actually, you know, it would be nice to have Dom. I know we were all saying we don't need Dom, but we're, I mean we're saying that because like. People are saying we can't do it without him. So we're like, we can do it without yeah, him, yeah. but we we would like, you know, we, we obviously would like Dom. I feel like Dom, if he's not injured, I, I would put him at third under Braylon and um, Nacho because he's, if you surround him with a good team that's like um, got size, you know, that's shooting, athletic, he, he can play guard, he will pass the ball to you. Like, I know it looks bad like, with like him and Eric fighting all the time, but like, He's a he's a in my opinion he's a smart player and that's just like I mean that's a very biased thing to say but like with Dom I, I feel like he's a really good rounded player and his size you're gonna put a guard on him who's gonna be a little bit smaller than him weight wise and he's a guard he's a he's a hard player I to guard. I had trouble guarding him last so, season. He was that was a play that he still brings it up me him not making me and then hitting a year old shot. I put it like three times oh in the highlight. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's and then you just turn away like now. No, I turn away because Johnny collapsed and I ran to the corner. To guard whoever Johnny was guarding, but he still fucking finished, man. Yeah, he's he's yeah. So I'd put him at like three or four with like I feel like he would be with like Sway, three or four between those two. That's just my opinion, Dom. Though, but he was my teammate, so it is very biased. Oh, yeah. So how how I think Dom's teams would do better, and because we all know we all know Dom can get a bucket I'm whenever he wants. Mm -hmm. We don't have a tryout. He oh, uh, no tryout. He can get to no, the basket. He has a. Stupid good mid range shot. Season? His three point shot, he pulls up wherever he wants. When and when he's hitting, he's I'm hitting. And he's easily or one of the most unguardable like people that we have like and have yeah, ever had. Guys coming back. However, oh, coming back. Yeah, okay. I feel I'm like Marcus you guys would have won a lot more. Ooh, and his teams in the future will have a lot more success if he 
lets everybody else get going first. That's yeah, and that that was the thing about it was like, how do we get Fritz? How do we get Gene? How do we get you know like, get me? How do we get the team involved with Dom scoring twenty plus? You need to know how to play with Dom. That, that's the thing. Well, you, that's, you have to adapt to Dom's setting to to strive. No, see, because I feel like when he was with you guys, you guys let him ball out. And in Josue, the last two games. No, but then Josue, was, Josue still took the back seat in that, and Josue played phenomenal. And but hit. there were certain games where I led the team in scoring, then Sway led the team in scoring, and Dom led the team in scoring. Ryan, it was like it was very they evenly stacked. distributed. It's you were stacked. stacked. Because I'm good at drafting. Nah, Don't give me a hard time. Nah, Don't give me a hard time. the talent coming in. I'm just kidding. I'm just There's like, a draft. There's kidding. a fucking tryout. But anyway... And Dom and Sway are returning players. Everybody had that opportunity. They let Dom slip. But regardless, Dom, we had the same, the Makos is the, the game that we lost in season three, or season four, excuse me. And it led to a huge fight for two weeks, sending me hundreds of messages. Wait, what game? The Makos. The only game we lost, 41 to 44. Should know. have been 43, but Dame messed up. Regardless, hundreds and hundreds of messages of how. I'm the fifth worst player on our team. Like, just <laughs> shitting, <laughs> shitting on me. And, like, a couple of days before our next game, I messaged him. I swallowed my pride, apologized. We moved on. And then he, like, gained that respect back for me. And then from that point on, he realized that what me and Mitch were trying to implement was to get everybody else involved so that the pressure was off him. And then when the time came where I'm hitting shots, Sway's hitting shots, now they have to guard you one-on-one. -on -one, yeah. And they can't. There's not a single person that could guard him one-on-one. -on -one. So if I hit two threes or Sway gets going in the lane and you now have whoever, you have a mismatch. You have an advantage. And if you don't, I do. Because there wasn't four guys that could guard all four of us. Similar with your team. There wasn't four guys that are guarding you if Gene actually hit shot, Gene, I love you, but you struggled. You, Gene, um, Dom, and Fritz, that's a hard forward to guard. Mm -hmm. Very hard forward. If he let oh, yeah. you guys get going first and then fell in line, and I think he would have figured that out if he played those extra yeah, five games. Exactly. But that's where you guys would have found that stride and really hit success. And good for us because it you know, <laughs> yeah. let us get the number one seed, but I think that his injury really fucked you guys because of that. Yeah. So he was back the last two games, right? He was back, yeah, season. he played the first two games, and then he was back for the last two. One. Two, no, he played two. He played the Goblins oh, and the, the Dogs. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, because so we didn't play against him. you were getting double-digit shots when he was gone. How many did you get when he came back? Well, with the Dogs, I got double digit. I went nine for ten with, I remember that. And then with the Goblins, so the Goblins was a different story. I told them, we fought, we had a phone call, the whole team, and I was like, I told him straight, but I was like, I'm going to guard one. I watch videos on one. I know how he's going to play. He's either going to wait for the pass, shoot it, or he's going to drive left, finish right. Like, I told him all these things. Like, I'm going to guard one. So I put all of my effort into guarding one. I Like, everything I had into guarding him because I knew th what he could do. And that's why um, I didn't really get the as majority of shots. I mean, I think I only scored like six points that game, but I'm trying to – play that role in the team of like, what does the team need to win, not what can I go out there and get. I mean, I can go out there and shoot damn near 15, 20 shots. I mean, everyone can in the league, obviously, but. But you're not needed to on your team. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it was hard for us to figure that. I feel like, like like he was saying, <laughs> missing five games, Ray Parker. it was just tough for it's us to, to really one. mesh at the yeah. end. I feel like it's very tough, not for me and Dom, because I mean, with the dogs, we, we meshed pretty well with like, Playing together in that sense, we didn't win, but we played. I feel like we played a lot better than the first couple games. But I think with Dom and Fritz was was hard for that mesh to go on because whenever Dom left, Fritz was our number one guy. He was getting he was he was hooping, balling out, and then Dom came back, and it was just weird. You can feel like a weirdness trying to trying to get back into that with these important games. So. It's it's hard when you don't have all of it. Yeah, players. and so we relied on Dom so much to shoot the ball. And it was just, you know, I, I understand, like, not a lot of the other team got a lot of shots, especially, I think it was in the Goblins. No one else got double digits except for him, right? I'm I think so. Something like that. Yeah, I don't think anyone else got double digits except for him um, for, with the score. So it's just, it really was just finding how to play with Dom. We didn't have enough time to do that. So That's fair. going back to the drafting for him, if you're going to draft him, you have to really think about who you're going to pick like stick with Go him. around him, yeah yes. you have to play you have to do that because like 
You have to put unselfish guys that are yeah. willing to play both sides of the ball. Because Dom will play defense, too. Mm-hmm. You put unselfish guys He's that are willing defender. to play both sides of the ball that don't necessarily need to take a lot of shots, that's that's when you're at your best yeah. with Dom. And you guys, I mean, unfortunately, didn't pan out. Yeah, no. Um, I played the best defense on Dom uh, when he was playing <laughs> oh against the dogs. God. When when uh, the, you guys were playing against the dogs, mm-hmm. Dom was too busy yelling at me to play. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's something I, I told him. I was like, "Bro, why are you why are you talking to him?" Like, like, I, I played lockdown defense because like, for some doing? reason, instead of shooting free throws on the other side of the court, he was looking back, yelling at me. Yeah. So, you're welcome. It was it was so it was. I mean, that, yeah. At the end, that was a little frustrating because we did feel like we could win that game. I'm not gonna lie, but. It, it, I mean, yeah. No, I don't know why he was talking. I like. I don't know why he was going back. I don't even know why he was talking to me. So. It was great. It was great <laughs> so for us. Like, um, we had one v one said Mike Parker and Chef. Um, Chef, yeah, one v one. Mike Parker, I don't, I don't agree with that one v one because of the fact that he was so inconsistent offensively this season. He was a third rounder, right? Yes. Who yeah. Was, who was inconsistent? Mike, Mike Parker. Mike Parker. Yes. He, I mean, he, he, he could score. Like he, he definitely can get to the lane. But like shooting wise, I feel like his his percentage was a little poor. I agree. Yeah, but even finishing at the hoop compared he, to the other guys in the first round, he's not. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 No. Yeah. He's, he's not. I think he's a second round pick for sure. Oh, for oh, absolutely. Sure. Oh yeah. No. He de- he's one of the people that definitely shot up. Yeah. He's, he's third, right? He's yeah. A, he's, he's a third, high so. second round pick. His yeah. only issue, I think, is is just he takes too many shots sometimes. When you have someone like Santi and Brady on your team, I don't think you need to be that player to be taking twenty shots a game. That's even insane. ten. Yeah. No, Honestly, even ten. I want. Santi taking 20 and I want Brandon taking 20. But, but he's like, what, 19? Yeah. He's, he's, like, he's, he's probably one of the youngest in the league, right? He's yeah. such a high I think now seed. he is. Yeah. I think now he is. I, I feel like also, like I said before, if you're going to draft him, I would draft John. Uh, if it's possible, John, John, you said Carter, right? John I, Carey. Yeah. Gary. I, I don't know why I say he's, Carter. I like John Carey. They yeah. work so well together, and I feel like that's one of the reasons why they're so successful. Like, if you really listen to them when they're on the court with each other, they, they do so well talking back and forth. And, like, I wouldn't say, like, John has like a, a mentor mentorship over him, but it's kind of like it looks like they're comfortable because they play with each other outside. If they did, I don't know if they did or not, but it looks like they I'm did. Not sure, yeah. It looks like they did, and they do so well together. That's so. that's one of La Familia's greatest strengths is how much they communicate, mm-hmm. and that is mainly because of Coach Tone. Coach Tone does a great he, yeah, job. Yeah, he's a great. I feel like he's 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 a great coach. When I was listening to him; like he's a great coach. He does a fantastic job telling his players exactly what they want from him. And then you have your number one pick, Braylon, who whenever Tone is starting to stray, he reels him back in. Oh yeah. Like we're we're gonna listen to you, but that's not how you talk. Like mm, that's 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 what's going on to like their previous game against magicians. Braylon was like, we need to get we need to get Parker back in. We need him back in the game now. Right. I agree. I would have put him in and told him play discipline. He doesn't have to guard. What is it? He was guarding G, right? Whenever he was in the game. There was they were switching. They're switching. I, I would Brandon put him was guarding G. I don't know exactly who he was on. I, at I would time. just put him in on somebody that. Or does not have him press. Yeah, you exactly. Press you don't ball. even need exactly. Yeah. You don't need yeah. to press. And I know they love that press because they got so many like steals and they got a lot of buckets off it. But like, um, I don't think like I like reeling it back in. I don't think that he is number one just compared to the rest of the, the rest of the time. Yeah. I, agree. I, yeah, I don't. Who was the other name? Other than that was Chef. The, Chef. It's a fringe. You know, He's I fringe. Think he, could, I think he, he could be. be. I he think he could be, be too. Yeah. He, he could be, but I just don't know who he'd replace. Yeah, and that's fair. If you won. No. That, one, but one even v- with 1v1 out, if you want to say that, you still have Dame and Phil at the end capping off that list. So, I right, listen. You can Wait, put so Chef. You're taking 1v1 uh, one one over Phil? I am. What? I'm taking 1v1, 1v1 over Phil strictly I, I, because composure, yes. 1v1's not going to quit on I'm, me at I'm the I'm going to let you know exactly why I would take 1v1 and why I love the guy. We had the all-star team. I organized practice. My brother, Ant, was the coach. He organized practice multiple times. 1v1 guy didn't have a car. He would Uber. Yeah, you know, he's a good guy. To he's every practice. 100%. He Ubered like an hour-long Uber to go to the one game. Bro, I, I have nothing but respect for the guy, and I think that he's a bucket and he moves the ball. To me, he's a first round pick based off of character and gameplay. Huge fan of that guy and I gained a lot of respect for him as a person and as a basketball no, player. I, I, That's I, why I, I would put him in the first. I'm not taking nothing away from him. I think he's a great player. I just think off of this season, the way he was shattered by Yusuf, I think that's the reason why he falls to the second round for me. Or maybe maybe late he first, could, yeah. early, very early sec- you know, second round. He's a top 10 guy. In. He's a top yes, 10 guy. 100%. Yes, 100%. I'm not taking away from him. I just think him being shadowed by Yusuf 
dropped his stock a little bit. And who knows, maybe someone's able to get someone in the first round and then he falls in the second round and then you guys have a bomb squad again. You know what I mean? It's just, because Yusuf shouldn't have fell to the second round. I don't think he should have fell to the second round. I got drafted over Yusuf. That, that, I don't think that was, that well, should have even happened. Because Sauce played with Yusuf for a little bit the season before. And but there was still more picks though before me and Santi. Yeah. He should have taken Santi. Who? Over you. Oh, 100%. Sauce. <laughs> If he had Sway and Santi, that's a very good duo. We just, at least I didn't take Santi because just out of respect for Tone. I know Tone wanted to play with his two boys, and I was like, whatever, I don't care. Man, I'm here to win, man. I mean, I'm yeah. also here to win. I, mean, I traded him that. that pick so that he could do that, so that I can get Chef in the third. Who's yeah. been traded? I traded my second round pick for Tone's second round pick, which was his pick was later in the second, so I can get an earlier pick in the third. So that I can pick still, uh, Spank and nice. Chef. That was nice. That was nice. You did good with that one. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't do any trades, and I love my team. Uh, I'm very happy with how I My brother them. said, is Tommy coming back? Possibly him, too. He didn't pass the ball. And so if you pick him in the first round, Tommy. good luck. The one I just dropped 50 That was just on the Ghost Riders. Oh, he didn't pass the ball. I Listen, like he's him. talented. I like Tommy. I think he's a really nice guy, and I think he's a really good hooper. Another issue with like the undersized guard, though, yeah. and the fact that he didn't pass the ball. So, like, in that campaign, in your two games here, you didn't really move the ball well. When I know he can, because I played pickup with him, it just kind of lowers his draft stock. And somebody's going to have a steal, but I don't think he's a first-rounder. Did he Did he play in any teams, before, like, did he play in any seasons before this one? No. No, this is his first season. This is his first. Yeah, I, I his feel first like, two games. just based off that as well, I mean, the, the pride game, you got to understand, like, it's hard for him to pass the ball. To 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 your you know you got a rebounder, I mean Ziggy was hitting them from the beginning. Your uh, cap can shoot threes, but like other than that, like he was the main score. In my that's just my opinion. I have not seen him. I know he played with uh, Trayvon, so he's playing with someone who's a first round talent. I didn't see how that game went. I know that if maybe if he had someone else who was like a second rounder or had that that having Ryan would help. Yeah, having Ryan, I think he would have. Didn't they have able, Ryan against no. the Magicians? No. Two weeks yeah, ago. Two weeks ago, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I didn't, didn't see him the ball. Okay, so that, that might have been, yeah. The but whole season, Ryan, Ryan got, was misused. He, yeah. was a, he was an amazing yeah, score, though. I don't, I, I've yeah. never, Ryan's. I think that, sorry, sorry. I, I think that no, with, like, up there, I think he's up there with Santi on, like, three-point shooting, though, in my opinion. Like, he's one of the best three-point shooters I've seen in this league, like, with, up there with Santi. I don't know if I'd put him over Santi just because I haven't seen enough of him and I've only seen one game. Santi's just been more efficient. Yeah, Santi's a very efficient guy, and, and um, I just, I don't know. I think he's good as well. I don't know. He is good. I don't think he's the first I think he's just, like you said, he's very undersized. Yeah. I don't know, like, I don't, I don't know if I'd put him over because a lot of these first-rounders are, are bigger guards or, like, taller guys, you know, so. And also, going back to it's my case good. for... Go ahead. Going back to my case for Joel, leading our team in rebounds, even though we have a lot of big guys. Um, Q doesn't want to play tough down low, so Joel's oh, got to yeah. come in. Why are you calling Q out? <laughs> Joel's got to come in and scoop up those rebounds because, you know, Q wants to get boxed out by other people playing soft. I feel like he plays well, though. He he. What was that game you guys played after us where Yusuf wasn't there? Who was that against? Me. You guys? You guys, right? Um, he they played you guys played phenomenal from what I remember whenever he he was actually moving the ball He had like that that type of fill play set where he was able to score when he wanted to score He moved the ball really well got shot doc involved and that was something that I feel like was very important because I've, I've seen He can he can shoot as well really well and getting the whole team involved. I feel like that game because you guys were having issues with Yusuf, brought the team kind of back together in a sense because you guys were able to move the ball and everybody was able to have touches. Like, no one likes to go play a game and not be able to touch the ball, really, you know? Um, which, again, is credit to Yusuf. He's been getting everybody yeah, no, a lot good. more involved yeah, yeah. lately. And just just to clarify, Q only had five less rebounds than Joel, and Q wasn't a starter. I'm just giving him, I'm just giving him shit. I'm getting amped up for next game. I, I want him to have that double-double. No, he was one away from it two weeks ago. Or two games ago, I want him to have that double double. Yeah. And I know I know he's gonna get it this game. All right, we're gonna move on to the next segment here. Uh, I, I went through all of these today, and I found all of the leaders for each stat category. Uh, so we'll start with points per game, and I think we all know who that is. Uh, that is so Sway. Sway MVP. with 24.4 points per game. Right behind him, his now teammate Phil. 22.6 points per game. Cool. Dom comes in at 22. 
Yusuf 21.9, Vaughn 21.3, Braylon 21.2, and Trayvon 20.5. Those are all the guys that had 20. Is Vaughn coming back? Um, that's something that we'll have to discuss. We'll okay. see. We love Vaughn. I personally love Vaughn, um, but I know that the whole leaving his team definitely put a bad taste in people's mouth. Um, especially his teammates. They were they were rather upset because he was in town that very night of the game that he said he couldn't attend. Yeah. So it's it's hard, man. I, I hope nothing but the best for him, and we'll see what actually happens with that. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I and it was something personal. So I mean, I, if it was for what it was that I, you know, you got to take care of business outside of basketball, 100. percent Well, if, uh, if it is. But true. then he was back in town. Yeah. yeah and but, saying that he wasn't going to be in Orlando and he was going to be staying, and and that's why his teammates were rubbed the wrong way about that. And then he was he used the excuse I didn't think they'd let me play. Since they found the replacement, this is an issue for another podcast. We'll, we'll yeah, dive yeah. into th- Tavon another time. Anyway, um, so Phil's points per games are without Both teams without uh, that one game versus you guys. Yes, right? yes, but I don't. I, he still wouldn't be number one. No, no, no. I'm just asking. Yeah. And then Yusuf also missed the game. So for both of them to be in the top four, damn, I should, it's not on the screen. No one can see it. It'll be. Oh, it is? It, that's on a lag compared oh, to real time. Oh, yeah. It's, it's oh, live streaming. So for for both of them to be in top four while missing a game, it's, it's impressive. It's very tight between two two through seven. Like it, the 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 points per game is very tight. Well, Dom only played what three, four. I thought he played five. Look at the MVP. Man. He did played. He, did he play wait, five? I think he played five. He played the first three games, and yeah, because yeah, we played you games. guys in the third game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then and then the last two games, so he did play yeah. five. Yeah. Dom would definitely be. Up there, obviously. You don't know that though, because maybe he takes a back seat, and mm-hmm. realizes that he doesn't need to score as much. You have no clue how that plays out. I don't think Dom will ever realize he doesn't need to score as much as he wants yeah, to. You never know. You never know. Uh, we'll move on to the next category: assists per game. Uh, no surprise here. Chief leading the way. Uh, I think this is three seasons in a row. Five point five assists per game. Number two is Mike Parker, four point seven assists per game. Easy to have a lot of assists when you got Braylon and Santi on your team. One v two sweat. Number three is Kenny, the chef long. Number four, Dog. Joel 1v1 God Francis. Number five, the psychopath Yusuf. Number six is me, tied with Trayvon. Um, I mean, it makes sense, except for Trayvon. Trayvon's the only non-ball dominant player that is up there. The rest of us are all guards and really should be. Two Makos in the top five. There we go. Joel, you Joel and team. Yusuf. That's why you're a top Two dogs team. in the top six. I, I didn't take it away <laughs> from, from Joel, man. I said he's a top ten player. I think, you know, he's a good player, man. But like Just I saying said. we're tied. Because Chef's 4.6 and I'm 4. And then Joel and Yusuf are 4.5 and 4.1. So as a team, our top two guys, <laughs> we're tied. So, and I think AJ's right underneath. So, any surprises on that list? Mm-mm. Not really. All right, we're going to move on to rebounds. Rebounds per game. Phil is leading the way here. 9.8 rebounds per game, just under 10. That's very impressive. Montel, 9.2, and he missed half the season. And we missed stats for one of the games that he did play. Um, I think he would be up there too. Mike Mitchell, 8 rebounds per game. Number 4, Trey Vaughn, 7.5. Number 5, former number 1 overall pick, two seasons, Chile. Number 6, MVP frontrunner Sway and number seven John Kerry. Well, the same thing can be said about Montel and his rebounds. Maybe he decides to take a back seat. Maybe he realizes he doesn't need to rebound no. as much. No, <laughs> definitely, definitely not for that. That man is a freak of nature, man. I love watching him play. In the words of Ingersoll, that man is athlete. He needs to come back. That, that was Matt Hua. Well, I we were, I didn't meet him. I heard it through Ingersoll pick. first. That's a top yeah. pick right there. Ooh. Ingersoll. Ingersoll. He's a dog. One of my favorite people to He's ever play with. He's a great person. Yeah. He's just such Fantastic a Fantastic human. All right. From rebounds, we move on to field goal percentage. Um, and no surprise, once again, Sway, 66.2%. He's Absolutely crazy. ridiculous. And then the man over here, Dallas Hawkins, 613 oh, shit, right man. behind him. That 90% game really, I think that, yeah. really I helps. Think that <laughs> I also didn't shoot a lot, so... Yeah, it very efficient when you did. Uh, number three, Montel. A lot of his was just under the board, flying around. Number four, this one surprised us kid. all. Steve the Kid, what? 60%. Great season from him. Do we have a Quiet. shot minimum? 
Uh, yeah, at least 20. <laughs> at least 20 shots? 20 shots, which is not a big... I, 20 or 25 is what I did. Um, Axel, 57.7. John Kerry, 57.6. And Phil, 54.7. Uh, I mean, to me, STK and Axel definitely surprises. Hell yeah, Axel. Guys, the, uh, good for them. Good for them. Veterans of the league uh, now, you know, coming alive. I feel like Sway and, and Phil, for the amount of shots they take, that kind of surprises me in a sense. Sway doesn't miss. Well, he does Sway, <laughs> Sway is either, Sway's either getting some bullshit roll off the bank to go in or he's getting fouled. Yeah, he so. does get a lot of free throws. I so didn't do like, free throw percentage. That's the only thing I didn't do. Yeah. Okay. So if he's if he's not making his shot, he's getting fouled. Is, it was, oh, it was a headache. God. You should do the worst free throw percentage of the league. Oh, my God. Well, don't worry. We'll get into fouls and turnovers later. I'll be in that category. We got... Oh, no, it's me. Uh, Three-point percentage leaders. Ryan Salaji. Barely touched the ball. Still shot 53.6%. Number two, the man with some of the best hair in the league, Dre. Uh, number three, we got Phil oh, at 51%. 51.2 for Dre. Excuse me. Number three is Phil at 50%. Number four... Fonzo. Hell yeah, Fonzo. 45%. Great job from Fonzo. Love to see that. Number five, Trayvon, 44.6. Number six, Yusuf, 44.4. And number seven, The Chef, 43.8%. Very impressive. Very impressive. Uh, A lot of those guys shooting above 40% from three in this kind of a league. That's crazy. Very solid. That is crazy. Yusuf, if you didn't shoot from half court, you'd be at 50%. Yeah, I was about to say, Yusuf 100%. surprises me. And <laughs> a little like... bit less bings, a little bit more bombs, Yusuf. <laughs> yeah, I Yusuf, love that. Yusuf definitely surprised me. With that. And Dre, because he shoots a lot of threes as well. Dre is fucking good. Like, he just doesn't miss. He's good. Like, he's he's, he's, he's I'm so surprised uh, Santi wasn't on there. Yeah, Santi was just below. Yeah, he was just below that list. He, he had, like... He's One, had a couple he bad had like, games. He had like a two-game stretch where he just was it hidden for some reason, and he still hidden. averaged over nineteen a game. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got the fun category now: fouls, uh, fouls per game. You got me leading the way with three point four fouls per game. The enforcer. The enforcer. <laughs> I think the refs like calling fouls on me. If we're being honest, you guys enjoy calling those full court fouls on me when I'm just going after a rebound, but that's okay. Number two, shot doc. 3.1 fouls per game. It's all a mind game. Number three is Sway, 2.7, leading all categories, even fouls. Number four is Vaughn, 2.7. Number five, Chili Chill at 2.5. Mike Parker, Axel, and Yusuf, all yeah, tied Yusuf. at 2.4. Uh, a lot of fouls. Way to keep us in the categories. Yeah, you guys, are, you guys are up there. Mako's two of the top six. Let me use your eyes real quick. Go ahead. We will move into. <laughs> you're excused. All right, we got, we got we got steals per game. Who else but Mike Parker at four point one? Right behind him, we have Yusuf at three point six. Hell yeah, Yusuf. Another familiar, John Kerry three point two. Kenny the Chef at an even three. Sauce a captain two point three. Sauce was like old dog out there. He was good, man. He was good. Number six, Santi. He made a list. 2.1 steals. Number seven, Gary Harris. 1.9 steals per game. We're going to move on to blocks. Nobody averaged one block. Uh, but Braylon led the way with 0.9. Vaughn just edged out Mike Parker with 0.71. Yeah? 0.71. It's because he played not a lot of games. Uh, Dallas. He's in the bathroom, but 0.7 for Dallas. Oh, yeah, Dallas. The Chef, one of our shortest players, him and Mike Parker both on this list, 0.63, and Fritz with 0.6 blocks. Uh, not very impressive for any of that, but that's okay. And the last category we have turnovers per game. Phil led the way with 3.7, Aaron the Don with 3.3, Sway with 3.2. Yusuf with 3.2. Hell yeah, Yusuf. Gary Harris with 3.2. Mike Mitchell, hell yeah, with 2.9. And then Mike Parker with 2.8. Um, Yusuf still keeping us in those standings, man. We got a- any surprises on any of those lists that we saw. I feel like most of them are pretty, uh, pretty believable. Pretty believable. Uh, we'll wait for Dallas to join us. Is I don't think there's anything else outside of predictions. Um, on that list, we talked about your beef. Yeah. STK's agent. My Stromboli. Your Stromboli. Dallas, you were number four with 0. 0.7 blocks per game. Really? Go ahead. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we went through all that. Um, Luke, we're going to go on to championship predictions. Um, so when you come back, goes. you can join us. Uh, we already know his prediction. Um, I don't know why Eric made the graphic like this, where we have <laughs> opposite sides. Is he is he predicting it's going to be dogs, Makos, or familiar goblins? I don't know what the hell he did here. But as we see, these are the four teams that are left, um, not the teams that are going to be playing themselves. But game one at ten fifteen. For those of you asking, uh, we have La Familia seven and three, now eight and three versus the Makos. Sitting at eight and two with that first round bye, best record of the season. Dallas, who do you have taking home the winner of the Orange Conference? I that's a hard one. It's very difficult. It is very difficult. <clears throat> I think that if you look at them on paper, it's easily, in my opinion, familiar. Just because. Like I said, you've got someone who, and, and, my, and like when I'm watching Brilliant, it's like he's not even trying, honestly. He doesn't oh, yeah. really want, like he gives the ball to Asante, Mike, and let them do their thing, and he only does their thing. But the way that the Makos have come together is phenomenal. And I, I really like the way that they play team. And it's just two, two teams that play, you know, really well together now. So I will have to say this, and I know he's going to hate me for saying this, but I, I have to take Familia because I feel like, if you have, if you have Mike Parker playing the defense that he can on one of the main scores, and you have, you know, Braylon playing good defense on the other main score, or however they do it, I feel like that'll that'll give them the edge uh, in this matchup. That's just that's how I see it. I mean, I like I love I, I think it will come down to like a like a one shot or two shot, like one or two possession game, but. I don't know. I, I like I like the the familiar team a lot. I'm not gonna lie. That's just my opinion, though. I love you, Luke, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> All right, Luke, you got the Makos. That's fine. Uh, Nick, whoa, 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 whoa. hold on, hold on. No, no, hold no. On, no. You don't on, get on. to talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I do get to talk. First of all, are you picking familiar? No. Well, then you don't get to talk. <laughs> we we should have beaten them both times. Uh, the first time we played them, we lost by one point, mm -hmm. and. Coach Tone had a great strategy of having Horace get 1v1 got ejected at the beginning of the second half. We have him for the rest of the game. That's a different story. But on our end, if 1v1 didn't show up late, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have got the technical free throw. And if he didn't get ejected, they wouldn't have got that second technical free throw. So It's just hard. I also, If you also look at it in the sense of like the Makos have way more depth. You guys have way more depth. And we play and all of our players. Exactly. You guys have way more depth than... Tone did. He played him 11. <laughs> you have way more depth than them. And I feel like if if that if it comes down to whoever has more depth, then you guys will win the game easily. But it's... Not it's, easily. It's hard. Like I, like I, yeah, I was going to say, it's hard to win a game against a team that has someone who's definitely... I, in my opinion, that would probably go the first overall. You got one of the best shooters on that team, one of the best defenders on that team, and one of the best glue guys slash rebounders on the team. You've got like one of the best almost in every category on that team. I said at the beginning of the season, the only team on paper that I was afraid of was La Familia. Yeah. And that's that's come true. La Familia is a really fucking good team. They're just, it's, yeah. It's, and it's, it's like, this is a championship caliber oh, game. We said that because we didn't have Montel then. What? Oh, that, yeah, 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 ye
And especially when your team is that deep, you have no flaws in your team. One, no offense, you're probably the biggest flaw and you're not even a bad flaw. I'm fine with that. And you, your te- the way you draft your team is perfect. I have you guys going all the way, to be honest with you. And the way well, that's not the question. Sorry, sorry, no that's offense, the, Mike. After this, the way your team is set up, it's it. There's, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. There's literally nothing wrong with it. And like you said, you would have beat them two times already. And theoretically, that's just that's how I see it as. I think Yusuf is gonna go off. One v one's gonna have a game. They have no size. Quinton's gonna. He's gonna. He knows what to do against John Kerry now. He's gonna go out there, box him out. And it's just that team is just too deep. It's it's gonna Q's gonna have to play a big part in this game if we want to win. I'm really gonna need really gonna need Q. He knows what he knows. Yeah, you you guys minutes. can't you can't let them get those second opportunities. Give him minutes. That's all he needs. He Q's Q's very important part of what we need if we want to win this game. It's gonna be a hell of a game. Uh, if if familiar can speed you guys up, familiar wins. If you guys can control the pace and keep them from transition. You guys win the game. Mm-hmm. They don't have a very good half-court set. They do best when you guys are disturbed or whoever they're playing is disturbed. You guys are better in a half-court set because you have smart players. And you have one of the best one-on-one players in Yusuf. Yusuf can take most guys off the dribble and score in some crazy fucking way. Um, so I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to pick Familia. Because if I don't, Braylon's dropping 40. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that. We're gonna drop at forty now that you said you, that. You picked you picked us to win last time and he didn't drop forty. Well he dropped forty against me. So <laughs> That's you. I, I'm just saying. I'm I'm gonna if I actually pick I think Mako's are a better team all around. Um it's so hard to count out Bray and Santi and Tone as a coach. It's very hard to count them out. <sighs> Um, Tony's but very good. I, I'll, I'll recant my statement. Darvis knows it already because we showed him the script. Um, it's <laughs> Luther Stromboli versus Mike Salico, and that's what it's going to be. It's going to be Mako's dogs. Doesn't know how to say either of our names, but that's okay. Very anti-Italian, apparently. I think you guys okay. counter them well as well. That that press that they do, I don't think that they will be able to do that against you guys. They didn't do it much against this last game because we just... Past you have ball. you have way better ball handlers and you guys. Well, I mean, like better than all some of the other teams. And you guys also move the ball really well now. I don't think I think a lot of your game also <laughs> does counter what they do, but it's also vice versa. I so I actually I think we have we we have two very 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 good ball handlers, and then the rest are like meh, mm-hmm. which I think benefits us because when they were pressing us, I got that ball. I was like, I don't want this. And exactly. that's what you have to oh, do yeah. during the press. No, exactly. Like, they pass me Top the ball. Potato. I'm not dribbling. Exactly. Take somebody else, take it. And it worked. Yeah. Crazy. All right. Well, the pod has spoke. Makos, 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 familiar. We move on to game number two. The Osceola Conference finale. We got the Goblins, now six and five, versus the Dogs, five and five. Five in a row to end the regular season. I'm picking dogs. Dogs by 40. Nah, oh. don't be disrespectful. Dog, I, the dogs will win that game, and I'll say probably about maybe by 12 points, 13 points, oh, honestly. That's all, That's all you got? That's okay. all I got right there. I think that definitely in the beginning it's going to be a good game, but I think second half it's it's going to be dogs. Just because, in my opinion, out of everybody in the entire league, you guys are the best rounded team. That's just my opinion. I, I told people in the Panthers, I was like, I, I, okay, I know we just set out the Mikos, but like, I haven't gotten to the dogs about no, that. No, you're good. You, it's literally, you've got, you've got shooting on that team, you've got playmaking, you've got athleticism, you've got size, you've got everything a team needs, and you also got people who don't really care about dropping 20 plus. You just got people moving the ball around. You've got championship blood on that team. Like, you've got it all on that team. It's all set up so perfectly on this team. Um,. So I think that, like I said, first half it's gonna be it's gonna be a battle, but I feel like the dogs are good at once they get up they really know how to close the team out. Same as the goblins, I'm, I'm not gonna take that away from them, but I do think that the dogs will win this game just because of like I said they've got everything that and the goblins do as well. But I think the dogs just have it a little bit better than the goblins do in that regard. Um, it's hard to say. I really like both teams. Um, if you guys continue winning the rebound battle with Spank and Montel, 
it makes it significantly easier for you guys. Um, I think it's going to come down to if Dean and Juan can keep everybody mentally in check. Because we've seen when the goblins blow up, they blow up. And Dean's doing his thing where he's tossing his hands up in the air. Uh, people are getting mad at Juan for when Juan drives to the basket just to try to dig themselves out of the hole. Like, there's a lot of conflict on that team. But when they're meshing together and when they're working as a team, they play really freaking well. And again, there's a reason they started off at such a hot streak. Mm-hmm. They're playing really well together. Um, I think it's a toss up. What toss up, man? I know it's playing. Oh. Doesn't play good if he doesn't play well. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just play with him yeah, today. Yeah. But they said that doesn't play, and I didn't read the full thing. I think it's a toss up. I think it's going to come down to who can keep their team composed. And Mike has shown a history of t- keeping a team composed. I love Juan. I love Dean. I want to see them succeed as well. Not it's just year. it's just a mental thing. And the Goblins have just been proven to blow up when they just need to keep their head in. Because as we've seen all season long, no lead is safe. But it feels like as soon as they start getting in that deficit, they start turning on each other, and you just can't win games that way. Throw shots at us? Against uh, La Familia, yeah, we got. We don't know about that. I'm not not taking shots. Just any team, like you can't you can't win if you're at each other's throats. Same thing when we lost against the Panthers and when we lost against La Familia as well. Like we were arguing a lot with each other, and it was early. We were still figuring out how to play with each other, but it comes down to who stays composed. And the dogs have shown a better way of doing that. So I'm gonna go dogs. I'm gonna go Mitch. Over two and a half threes, um, and that's attempted or made. Made. Oh, there you go, made. Money Mitch. Money Mitch, Mitch is getting Money Mitch over two and a half threes. Okay, so championship game. We have it, Makos versus Dogs. You have it, Familia versus Dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, we do have a special halftime performance from my brother, the Panther sponsor, Chris Scalco. Hell yeah going to be performing at half. Shout out, Chris. Hell yeah. Um, should be a nice little fun touch. Before that, we will have a three-point shootout. Uh, it's going to be the same thing we did last year where each team will elect two players and they will play an old-school three-point shootout game. So everybody, you hit the five spots, next player goes five spots. Whatever team wins moves on to the next round. Winners get a trophy. Um, championship game, and then we'll have the award ceremony but obviously before that, we have to pick our Season 5 champions. I know I'm picking the Dogs. I know you're picking the Makos. You said Makos? You said Makos. Who do you got? So between the Familia and... then this is all... These two games will be played in the same day? Mm-hmm. Yes. Correct. Will be so tomorrow. you have to also uh, put that... I feel like... They're playing back-to-back. They're playing back-to-back. So well, I feel Makos, like... Makos, Familia will be first. Mm-hmm. Dogs and Goblins will be second. Then there'll be the three-point shootouts, about 30, 45-minute rest. They get... About a two-hour rest, so there's a yeah, yeah. There's a little bit of a difference. I, I will like I, so I think that regardless of that, I feel like they still the family is going to have to play their ass off if they want any way to beat the Makos. I feel like with you guys, you guys like I said, you have such a well-rounded team against the Goblins. You're going to have to play. You're going to have to play against them, but I don't think you have to play as hard as the family will have to play against the Makos. And like you said, you got that break and everything, but I would have to pick the dogs over the Familia just because you guys have such a better rounded team than them. They're very top heavy. Their top heavy guys carried them through the season, but you guys have beaten the last five teams you guys have played because you guys are all there now. I know that was something that was struggling. You guys have Montel. Like you got you got everything you guys need to succeed. So and you got championship blood. I know that you and Tone have Played against each other a lot. The past two championships. Exactly, yeah. and and you know it's uh, it's there. Numbers are there. You're you're two and zero oh in that category. So I feel like he's gonna come out and he's gonna come for it. But I don't think he'll take be able to take it. And it's gonna get clipped. And it's gonna be like some montage of me saying this, and then it's gonna that be <laughs> them saying that. But I think it's I have tons of alarm clock. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I just think that the dogs, out of every team that's left, they have and they also have the most size out of every team left. Like the only team, the other team that has size that can go in some is the Goblins, and I think that they'll beat the Goblins. So if you get all your team shows up, I think you guys will win. <laughs> That's just my opinion, though. That's just my opinion. You're I have the biggest it. team in the league. What are you talking <laughs> about? Who are you? Okay, so if you play against them, 
You have to put somebody on Montel. Right. Who's who are you gonna put on Montel? Who can't? Who, mean, who's oh, Montel doesn't shoot the ball. But he he, he he's athletic. Shoot. He doesn't need to shoot. He went in there and he got he got 18 points against us just getting rebounds, putting it up. Who are you gonna put against Spank? That's a big. I know you have. Q. But Spank doesn't go for boards though. He's been playing like a big man recently. Mm. He's been playing like a big man recently. You've got obviously you've got somebody for Chef. You've got someone for Donnie. You yeah. got someone for Donnie. Like you you you. I don't know. That's just how I'm looking at it. I, I think Montel's the X factor in this because of his athleticism, and you, it's hard when you got to worry about Chef and Donnie scoring their 20 plus points, and then Montel is going to come in and he's going to score 18 plus. It's and Spank getting rebounds, second opportunities because they get that a lot. They get a lot of second opportunities between those two guys getting rebounds, or they'll get the defensive and making it. So you only have one opportunity. That's just how I see it. I think that the Dogs will win the game, their games because of the, the players they have on their team. It, I mean, it one thousand percent comes down to who's willing to do the. Sh- nobody exactly. else wants to do. If, it. And, and they have if, a lot of people if, that don't like to do if that. If Montel starts arguing about not getting his backdoor lobs or something like that, then he'll lose. You're gonna, you, like I said, Montel. In my opinion, for you guys, you and Montel, because you need to hit those threes like you've been hitting. If you are not hitting those threes, to have someone come out and guard you so you can make it make it a dog's game. Or if someone is not able to keep up with Montel, and, or if Montel is not playing his game, that's why I think you guys are the X factors. Those are two reasons for both of you guys. So if you guys are playing your games, then that's what I see. Fair jo- enough. Joel says we're just gonna play zone. Dogs can't shoot; they fetch. That's crazy. <laughs> that's all right, Joel. Over over the last four weeks, I believe I lead the league in three point percentage. But that's I mean, that's really another point. Ago. No, we can't <laughs> shoot to save our lives. We can't. And you're right. If I have to hit shots. You have to hit shots, yes. and Chef has to hit shots. Yes, which Chef can. Yeah, and, and yeah. he shows it. It's, it. That's why I think that it's just X factors. So if, I don't think that, like, if you play against Familia, I don't think it matters if they have a good or bad game. I think it just matters if you guys have a good or bad game. Because, he, like I said, you need Montel to go in there and be the X factor. Out of, like, everyone on that team, you need him to go in there. No one on the Familia team is going to be able to keep up with him. They're going to have to put Braylon on him. And that leaves, you know, your guards to do what they do best, score. So it, it's going to be tough for someone, a team to guard you. That's just my opinion. I love Montel. He plays a great game, freak athlete. He gets in his head way mm-hmm. too easily, though. Like, he'll miss one easy shot, and then he's just questioning everything he does from there. And Yeah, he just needs he, to stop settling. He needs to stay confident. He stays confident and keeps attacking. Make or miss, he's, he's going to get fouled. He's going to get another board. Like, just keep attacking. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's it's hard because you guys are all you guys are all good teams and all very well rounded except for Familia, in my opinion, the yeah. Goblins, you and and the Dogs. So if if your if your argument for the Dogs playing Familia is Familia is very top heavy, and but then you said for us that we have a good team one through nine. So like, yeah, how but does I that think that sense? but like, you have to look at it like Familia also <laughs> Familia is top heavy. I feel like it's hard to guard Bray- Braylon. And you guys don't have an athlete like Mintel. If I was and this is just, this is just my opinion. If I was the dogs, if I was playing Familia, I'm putting Montel on on Braylon because I know that he's got length. I've seen Braylon play. I've watched videos before we played against them. This is something I do. I did this for Panthers. I watch games and I watch how people play and I study them and I tell them their weaknesses. Braylon, when you put someone who's lengthy and athletic against him, he does struggle. He does struggle. So if you 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 need to you'll have to put one v one guard on him, right? He's your athletic like lengthy guy on him on him. Yusuf will have to guard. Will have to guard. Um, a chef. You guys also have Salty. that. Right, you're talking about. Oh no, 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 no! I'm talking about. I'm talking about them. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about them versus. Um, yeah, yeah you said versus. Guard. No, I'm talking about them versus you. Oh. Uh, or no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. I'm talking about Familia. I'm just because she said like him, him and Familia. I'm t- like comparing them. I f- I feel like I'm confusing myself. But like you're saying, you're saying you're you're the, they're top heavy. I feel like. It I still like doesn't you, matter. It still doesn't matter. Higher than your top, because those four guys are really. Yeah, good. I, I don't. Good, man. They're still good, and I think that, like you said, you're gonna need them to to blunder <laughs> up. Who's pressured? You guys are pressured to pick me. Oh my god! You didn't even pick me. I'm not. I've been. You can ask. You can ask everybody on the Panthers. I said it since like week. Like when you guys started popping off, I was like, when you guys are all there, you guys are probably like one of the best teams because, like I said, athleticism, shooting. It's it's hard to guard you guys, and I, I mean. First hand, whenever not you guys beat the it. shit out of us, that's what it was tough. I, I I let Montel score 18 on me because it's I'm not as athletic as Montel. Nobody is. No one is. He's an <laughs> X factor, and that's why that's Ridiculous. why I'm saying he stays confident, and they're hard to beat. They're they're super hard, and 
yeah, it's just... In my opinion, and I know I've heard a lot of people agree, whoever wins out of us in La Familia is most more than likely going to win the championship. And I've heard the opposite. Don't worry, Lou. It's I hard. Should. Yeah, it's hard. I don't Eagles know. Do I don't think there's. I don't think there's a guarantee this year. And there's not. Yeah, I there, think last not. season it was pretty clear. Yeah, it's 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 just like whatever team blunders. I know who's getting out first though. Well, who's gonna lose for sure? That's guaranteed. Well, whoever loses the Makos and Familia, one of those two. Well, uh, well, a guaranteed loss is what I'm talking about. That team, that that game could go either way. Yeah. No, I, I know what he's saying. Team. Like against the Goblins, you guys have no shot. There is no guarantees. There, mm. and Juan is very good. Dean can hit shots. I will never underestimate a team, and I'm never going to go in there and be like, "Oh, we got this game." Mr. Dudley, do right? Yeah, that was sleep. that was our reason we lost. <laughs> but the reason why I said they just you guys are too stacked compared to that team, man. I guess you, stopped, you said familiar. Are you talking about the Goblins? The Goblins. Yeah. You guys stopped the three point shooting. You guys won the game, and you guys had the size to stop it. And you just need something to make it a one v one or one on one game. Because they play good as a team. If they don't play good as a team, they'll, they're they going to lose. And that's I think that for them to beat you, it's just a mental thing. Get Montel out the game and play as a team, and then it can go either way. But I, I do agree. I think that out of if, if we're going to pick a game that's like we can say someone's going to win, it's going to be it's going to be Dogs versus Goblins, and the Dogs will take it. I hope so. I would I would love nothing nothing more. <laughs> yeah. Batman we we need the goblins to win so that Batman gets on the podcast. <laughs> no Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. Um, yeah, that game just comes down to if the goblins are gonna start fighting with each other or not. Yeah, if, I, I like the goblins team a lot too. They got I do too athleticism I, and it it upsets and I, I, t- I tell Juan all the time that he pisses me off because he gets to the basket so freaking easily mm-hmm. and then just misses and I play with him outside uh, um, outside of the league like at Silver Star or Winter Park or whatever and when dude's hitting he's hitting like he pulls half court threes and it's like Juan, Juan. like he plays phenomenal basketball so that's why it makes me so angry when he's not doing the same thing yeah. and it's just because I know what he's capable of doing and anyone who's played with him outside of this league knows what he's capable of doing. I, yeah, I don't understand in the sense of, like, we saw what one did in trials. We're not, we're not going to sit here and act like we didn't see him throw it off the backboard and dunk it. Like, But then he broke his hand. That's what happened? Yeah. I, okay, I was wondering why he in hasn't scrimmage. really dunked. Yeah, he broke his hand in the scrimmage, so he hasn't had the same confidence dunking. Mm-hmm. That's really been like... Uh, wait, his hand's still broke. Wait. Okay, so then... It, his hand is healed now, but it's... It never fully... The mental. It's like a mental... Well, like he never like really he let it heal either because he kept playing through it. So like yeah. if you like hurt your ankle and like you're afraid to jump now because you're afraid yeah, to yeah, yeah. down on it. But was it ever really broken that he was able to play with it though? Yeah, actually, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It was... It was... I mean... Man, he's a yeah. dog for playing on that because yeah, yeah. that would have not... Yeah, he played with it multiple times. What a beast. But yeah. They, they play the mental game and they take away the three ball and it's... It's, it's gonna, gonna be fun to watch. It's gonna be dogs. Good. These are gonna be fun to watch. Yeah, it's gonna be a hell of a last week. Uh, anything else you guys want to bring up before we wrap things up? Mm-hmm. Despite what Batman says, I've enjoyed the podcast. Uh, these guys don't drink, so there's no alcohol here, so we don't have assholes acting belligerent. <laughs> Sorry that <laughs> you don't like <laughs> you don't like uh, intelligent conversation. You rather see Mike Mitchell sitting here with a with a big Margaritaville glass and smiling the whole time. Who's, but who's Mr. Dudley Do Right? Me, the, I Dudley work at Do-Right? I work at a uh, Ripsaw. He saw uh, me. He, you know, it's funny. He came up to me. He was <laughs> like, <laughs> he had he had like a durag guy do rag on. And he had like the glasses. I didn't know who the fuck he was when he came up to me. He was like, I'm Batman. He like pulled his shirt. Oh off my the god! Glass. <laughs> I was like Batman. So, <laughs> what a yeah. fucking nut. You no, I love Batman. I love that Zero guy. Zero conflict Stromboli. What does that even mean? Uh, it's just Batman yeah, trying no to make conflict, the, though, I, no. I choose He's trying to make the chat interesting. I choose my team. Make a make us their number one. That's a tough <laughs> that, that's a tough game, bro. I don't I, I hate choosing a team, but I'm excited to see it, yeah. I hate choosing a side. It's gonna be a shame I gotta warm up the whole time and I'll get to watch it. <laughs> but that's okay. Reapers on three. Makos, we play at ten fifteen. Don't show up at ten fifteen. For the love of God, please. Don't worry, Santi won't be on time either, so you guys will be fine. Joel, get there early. <laughs> Put shots up. And make sure to like and subscribe. Shout out 1v1 God. Uh, like and subscribe. Follow every week around 8.30. I try to do 8.30. Uh, Luke was late. I was eating dinner too. But 8.45, the latest. Sometimes 9. The latest, 9.30. 8.30 podcast every wednesday we got at least two more weeks left of it uh tune in next week for the championship edition we will have the championship team in attendance and the week after that 
captains. See you guys Sunday. Gene, uh, yeah, for Gene real quick. What's he say? So same Gene. day. He's asking what yeah, day. Yeah, same day, Gene. Yes, everything. Everything is the same day uh, this That's Sunday. Day, right? That's the last day. Last April fourteenth. April fourteenth is the final day. Makos versus Familia, ten fifteen. Eleven twenty five. Dogs versus Goblins. Three point shootout. Championship game. Award ceremony where we figure out who's gonna be. I don't even care. <laughs> it's not me. Leading the league in fouls. All right, guys. Have a good night.